Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice functional equation. We're given that f of x plus f of 1 over cube root of 1 minus x cubed equals x cubed, and we're going to be finding the value of f of negative 1. We're also going to talk about if we could possibly find an expression for f of x or any other value that we might be able to find. All right, this problem is from Turkey Math Olympiads, which used to be Turkish Math Olympiads. That's the new name. And it's a really nice problem and kind of on the easier side. So in this problem, we're going to be solving for f of negative 1. So I think it makes sense if we replace x with negative 1. So let's go ahead and start with that. Replace x with negative 1 and see what happens. Even if you don't have any ideas, because of the presence of f of x, you can always try something like this. So when I replace x with negative 1 on both sides, I'm getting f of negative 1 plus f of... Now here, if you replace x with negative 1, you're going to cube x, which is negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, and then 1 plus 1 is going to be 2, so you're going to be getting 1 over cube root of 2. And on the right hand side, since we replace x with negative 1, negative 1 cubed is also going to be negative 1. Okay? So that's one equation we're getting from here. And this kind of gives us, should give us, some ideas. Right? Since I got f of negative 1 along with another value, which is f of 1 over cube root of 2, the next step, guess what the next step is going to be like? Replacing x with this number right here, which is 1 over cube root of 2. This may not always give you good results, but it's probably going to put you on the right path most of the time. If you replace x with 1 over cube root of 2, first you're going to have to hit f of x, so it's going to be f of 1 over cube root of 2. And then here, if you replace x with 1 over cube root of 2, think about it, you have a fraction, you're going to cube it, so you'll get rid of the cube root, that'll be 1 half. So this is going to become 1 half, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. You're going to be getting the cube root of 1 half. But that's 1 over cube root of 1 half, which is actually the cube root of 1 half. So, I mean cube root of 2, sorry. So it's kind of like this. We have 1 over, 1 over cube root of negative 2. I mean 1 over 2, sorry about that. I keep messing this up. So 1 over 1 over cube root of 1 half, when you flip this twice, it's going to be cube root of 2. Because you can always write the cube root of 1 half as cube root of 1 over cube root of 2, which can then be written as 1 over cube root of 2. So it's, in other words, the reciprocal of this expression is going to be cube root of 2. So the second part is going to give us f of cube root of 2. And the right-hand side, when you replace x with 1 over cube root of 2, you're going to get 1 half. Make sense? So far, so good? Okay, great. Now, we got a new expression. This just came up after replacing x with 1 over cube root of 2. Then we got another input, which is cube root of 2. So our next step is going to be replacing x with cube root of 2 and hoping that this is going to give us something nice. For the first part, it's going to give us cube root of 2 inside, which is good. But what about the second one? The cube root of 2 when cubed is going to give us 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. Great. This is going to give us f of negative 1. And on the right-hand side, if you just cube cube root of 2, you're going to get a 2 from there. Beautiful. So this problem obviously works out well because that's how it's been designed. Okay, great. So those are the three values that, are, that you can see here. What should we do? There are actually two ways to approach this problem. And one way to approach it is basically add up all the equations. When you do, you're going to get the f of negative 1, f of 1 over cube root of 2, and f of cube root of 2. And each of them is going to come up twice. So we kind of need to multiply the sum by 2. And now you're going to get the sum of these three things. 1 plus 1 half is going to be 3 halves. If you divide both sides by 2 or multiply by 1 half, you should be getting f of negative 1 plus f of 1 over cube root of 2 plus f of cube root of 2, which is 1 half times 3 halves, and that's going to be 
three fourths. Great. We had three different variables here. You could also name them ABC if you wanted, but that's not necessary. And we got the sum of the three variables. And what we have here is the two-way sums. And since we're looking for f of negative 1, let's go ahead and pick an equation that does not contain f of negative 1. Does that make sense? So in other words, we're going to go ahead and pick this one because it doesn't contain f of negative 1 and then use that value. So f of 1 over cube root of 2 plus f of cube root of 2 is 1 half from here. And if we go ahead and plug it in here, this sum right here is going to be 1 half. We can find f of negative 1 from here by way of subtraction. 3 fourths minus 2 fourths is 1 fourth, and that would basically be the value of f of negative 1. Easy, right? But the million dollar question is, could we find any other values besides these? Could we find f of x from here, right? We're going to go ahead and explore that, but let's go ahead and talk about a second approach for finding f of 1 first, f of negative 1 I meant. And probably another way to do this would be to eliminate some of the factors, right? You could also kind of like take these two equations and add them. That's going to give you f of cube root of 2, f of 1 over cube root of 2, and f of negative 1 twice. And then again, from this, you could subtract the second equation, and that would also give you the answer. Think about it. We add these two, 2 plus negative 1, which is 1. And if subtract one half, you're going to get one half, which is actually the answer. But of course, it comes twice, so we have to cut in half, and that's going to give us one fourth as before. Pretty much similar ideas, but you could do it. Or you could just do it a little differently, like take two equations at a time, eliminate maybe like in these two equations, eliminate these two things, and then use the first equation because one of them is going to be negated and you can kind of use those to find f of negative 1. So there's so many ways you can find f of negative 1. But let's go ahead and take a look at f of x. Uh, could we possibly solve for f of x from here? If we could, then it would probably look like this. Let me tell you. Because since I'm trying to find something for f of x, I should probably replace this with something. Maybe like t. Right? I don't want to use y because f of x is usually replaced with y, but you could use it if you want. So this would imply 1 over cube root of 1 minus x cubed equals t, or cube root of 1 minus x cubed equals 1 over t cubed. And then from here, we could solve for 1 minus x cubed, you know, kind of like replace. Oops, I guess I over cubed it, so I shouldn't cube here. That will be 1 over t cubed. And then, if you wanted to isolate this, of course, that, that's our goal. You could write it like this, and then write it like this. And then you could probably cube root both sides, and so that would imply that you need to replace x with this, right? Well, is it going to give us another value? Then we can try replacing x with this value, so on and so forth. But that's going to be painful, and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Let me know if you find any other ways to approach it. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.